I'm Dr. Brent Allen. I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon uh, based in Perth in Western Australia. Uh, today, I'm going to show a case of extreme atrophy of the maxilla or the upper jaw uh, and reconstruction using dental implants. And traditionally, we would take CT scans preoperatively for these cases, evaluate these as part of the planning process. Traditionally, we would look at these images in, in sagittal, uh, coronal uh, and axial planes, but using virtual reality, we can scroll through these images in multiple different planes and angles and to evaluate things in a much more, in much more detail. So looking at uh, the preoperative CT scans using the virtual reality technology gives us a di increased uh, diagnostic skills in terms of viewing these images in ways that we couldn't view them before. And then using the post-operative CT scans, we can evaluate the ongoing health uh, of the of the bone, the implants themselves, and the surrounding maxillary sinuses. Uh, so if we view this technology, uh, it, it has advantages from over traditional technology. We were just looking at 3D images in, a, in really a 2D format. Uh, so very exciting technology and uh, ex exciting developments for the future as well. Today we're going to have a look at a case of extreme atrophy of the maxilla, or the upper jaw. This is a patient who lost their upper teeth uh, approximately 30 years ago. And when the upper teeth are lost, the bone supporting the teeth resorbs away and continues to resorb away. So even though uh, she was wearing dentures, this continued atrophy or resorption of the ridge goes on. And if we have a look at this, we can see the, the upper jaw, we see the nose, and just above that. And we can see some gray structures which are representing the ideal position of the teeth. So that gives some idea of the degree of bone loss that's occurred with this case. So we're going to look at this case using virtual reality today. This is a uh, diagnostic tool and a planning tool that we use uh, to look at the structures of the, of the mid face, look at the, uh, the remaining bone. We can see the, the volume of the nose area. Within the, the upper jaw, there's the maxillary ear sinuses and, and the ear sinuses uh, increase in size with re resorption of the alveolar ridge. The tooth roots sit in the floor of the sinus and with the loss of the teeth again, the sinus will expand downwards into where the alveolar ridge used to be. And then with a case like this, uh, there's not sufficient uh, bone for conventional implants. And traditionally, we would have grafted bone to the maxilla, take bone from the hip area, graft that to the maxilla, wait for that to heal for six months, place implants, wait for them to heal for four months, uh, and, and then carry out a second surgery to expose the implants. And then the patient would have uh, implant supported bridge work or teeth supported by the dental implants. Because there's been so much resorption, conventional implants can't be used. And we're going to plan today for zygoma implants. These are long implants that were designed by Professor Brunemark in Sweden, and they extend from the uh, residual uh, resorbed uh, ridge of the jaws through the maxillary sinus area into the cheekbones or the zygomas, and they're anchored in the zygomas. And placement of four of these long implants, they can be up to 52 millimeters in length sometimes, and uh, they anchor very securely into the cheekbones and then the, the teeth can be supported by these four implants and they can be placed immediately, what we call immediate loading before the implants heal. It, it traditionally takes at least four months for the titanium implants to heal solidly with the bone. So there'll be a provision or temporary bridge placed imme uh, immediately following the surgery. And then after a healing period of a six months, they will go to a final uh, bridge, which is a much more sophisticated uh, titanium supported bridge uh, on the implants. So if we have a look at this case, we'll just, we'll just take control of this. And, and in, in this virtual reality, we can rotate the, the, the whole complex of, of, the, of the head and, and upper jaws. And we can scroll to the left or, or the right, and we can even scroll upwards so we can look from underneath to give us an idea of what the, what the palette of this patient looks like. And, and as we can scroll through, so we can then move through the image. And what we can do is then remove the, remove the teeth area and then we get up into the alveolar ridge. And we can see just as I move slightly through the ridge, 
this is like paper thin bone, maybe a millimeter thick if we're lucky. And what we're looking at now, we're looking into the into the nose from below, and we're looking in just to the side of the nose is the maxillary ear sinuses. You can see that these are uh, very large structures, and now we're looking uh, in into the superior part of the maxillary sinuses, and we're looking at the orbital floors. Uh, and if I wish to scroll. Um, to one side, then I get over into the cheekbone, so we can then visualize the, the volume of bone in the cheekbones. And an assessment of this is important because there are some patients that don't have a very much bone uh, within the cheekbones themselves. They can be quite hollow, and we need to know this before because obviously if they're hollow, there won't be sufficient bone uh, to support the implants that we're planning. So we're seeing the other, other cheekbone now, and I can scroll back through there again we're looking at the sinuses and we get to the level of the ridge now i'll just turn this image um, so we're looking more from a front view again and and if i move through the bone in this in this area as well this is significantly important in terms of, of planning these cases when there's bone and it's important that we we plan the initial positions usually we're looking at perhaps a lateral incisor area and a, first premolar area as being the areas of the starting point for the implants. So if we look here, we're looking into the nose and we're seeing the, the, the sinus spaces as well. And you can see that these are very large and, and we're looking at just millimeter thickness of, of the bone cortex of, of the mid face. And so planning these cases is important. We want to plan the initial positions. We want to plan carefully the positions of, of both of the, of the zygoma implants within the cheekbones. Um, the orbital floors and the orbital uh, contents are just superior to this and we need to plan carefully. The implants need to be solidly encased in bone. So, so viewing these images like this, traditionally where we are looking at more axial and coronal slices and we can really look at all different uh, rotations and different planes within these images, giving us a, a much better uh, information in terms of guiding what our plan is going to be in the future. So this is looking at this case with the CT scan with the preoperative images, and then we'll go and have a look and see how the, the surgery eventuated, and we'll look at the zygoma implants within the, uh, the bony structures of uh, this patient's uh, mid face. Okay, so we've already had a, a look at the pre-surgical uh, CT scans of this particular patient in, in 3D. And now I want to show you the, the post-surgical uh, images. So this is a CT scan taken post-operatively. We use this for evaluating uh, the ongoing health of the, of the implants. With traditional implants, we would use uh, intraoral radiographs, but that's not possible with these zygoma implants in a patient who's got extreme atrophy of the upper jaw. So the post-operative images here we're looking at, we'll be able to see the implants. What we can see now, you can see the gray structures uh, below the head, uh, the teeth. There are some uh, vertical titanium cylinders which are joining the teeth. So this is an implant supported bridge. The teeth are supported to those four cylinders and those four cylinders are then screwed to the zygoma implants. And I'll, I'll just move through this image. So we'll move the teeth away. We're seeing this and we're starting to see the two front zygoma implants as they are right on the on the front edge of the maxilla and they're very close to the nose as we can see and they're solid structures and as we go back then further we will see the other zygoma implants so now what we're looking at is four zygoma implants which are passing through the maxillary sinus you'll see that there is some bony structure within the sinus so i have carried out some bone grafting into the maxillary sinus area at the time of surgery i do this uh, to cover the implants with bone. Uh, if we didn't do this, the implants would be sitting in uh, airspace within the sinuses, and that uh, is problematic sometimes in terms of if people develop upper respiratory tract infections, sinus infections that can infect the implants. So by grafting and isolating these implants from the sinus cavity, this uh, eliminates that risk. And if I scroll to one side, we, as we see, as we go out towards the cheekbone, we can see the implants, and we're looking at the cheekbone now, the implants are penetrating through that so there needs to be bone, uh, solid bone between the implants, and then they project just through the surface of the cheekbone as well. And this is part of the protocol, so we're engaging. You can see on that outside surface is cortical bone, which appears white in the image. 
then there's more cancellous bone within the body of the cheekbone itself and then on the inferior surface as we go towards uh, the maxillary sinus we see another cortical area and it's important to engage these uh, solid cortical plates of bone and we can scroll uh, to the opposite side and we can see the implants and the bone surrounding those implants right up in, into the cheekbone area and just above the superior implant we can see how close that is to the orbital floor as well so executing the surgery is really important to avoid vital structures and these type of images that we can use for both planning and reviewing uh, are important. And I'll just scroll up, so what we'll do is we'll look from, from the undersurface, from the occlusal surface or the palatal surface um, of the teeth, and we can see the, the teeth, the gray structures, and I'll just bring that a little bit closer. And, and I can scroll through again, so what we, we're looking at, we'll, we'll be removing the teeth, and then as we go, we're seeing the bridge is now, and we're down to the level of the, the bony level at the palate. So you can see there's four implants penetrating um, the paddle surface of, of, the, of the upper jaw ridge or the alveolus. And then we, as we go through, we can look into the nose now, and then we're starting to see the maxillary sinuses, and we can see that bone grafting, which is on the inner surface of those implants and looking up into the, we're looking up into the orbital floor now and we'll just scroll back through there. So we can see from these images that there's a healthy maxillary sinus, there's no pathology within the sinus, and the implants are covered with bone for almost their entire length is what we want to achieve. And so we have a, um, a very solid reconstruction of the upper jaw on, on four zygoma implants. Um, and this would be the type of result that we'd wanna see um, every time. Thank you.